So this diagram is in the plate tectonics unit. I'm looking at today the convergent plate boundary, which is oceanic converging with the continental. Now these plates are different and they differ in the thickness, composition and density. And this creates certain processes and features that occur at this boundary. So the ocean plate and continental plate, ocean plate is thinner, made of the crust of the sphere, and the Connell plate is thicker, again, made of crust and lithosphere. lithosphere. So underneath the crust and the lithosphere is the asthenosphere. This is the thicker layer that is where we have the movement, the convection currents, it's plastic in behavior, it flows due to the heat, and this convection current that exists in this layer is the mechanism that moves and drives plate tectonics. So when discussing plate tectonics and convection currents, the convection currents are going to move the plates. In this case, they're going to move towards each other in a collision or convergent situation. And to, to do that, to really understand what happens when these two plates collide or hit, is going to be density. And density is mass over volume. I'm looking at how dense each plate is based on the composition or what it's made of. So the ocean plates composition versus the canal plates composition. And what's going to happen when they collide based on the density? And which one will sink, which one will float? An example of density I use in class is the iceberg in water. And water is one gram per centimeter cubed, which is density. And the iceberg, because it floats, is less. It's 0.8 or 0.85. And this allows the iceberg, even though it's a large piece of ice and weighs a lot of lot of weight or tonnage, it's going to float because it is less dense than water. Great example to use in class. Density is really important. Now, basalt, which is the main rock of the ocean plate, is three grams per centimeter cubed. And the granite and site Cornell crust or plate is on average 2.7 grams per centimeter cubed. So that means the oceanic plate is denser than the Cornell plate. So in terms of collision, what's going to happen is the oceanic plate is going to be forced under to sink, which is heavier, through the convection currents, which is called slab pull, and the fact that it's hitting against a larger plate, which is continental, and this is called subduction. So the whole process is to force the denser, heavier plate down into the upper mantle and the asthenosphere, where it's hotter, and you get the friction and earthquakes occurring with the movement of the two plates against each other, you get the accretional wedge forming, and you get melting partially of both kind of plates, the oceanic plate and the continental plate. Mostly the continental plate is melting with the addition of water, and it creates melt and magma, which is going to rise up, which is one major process and feature of this plate boundary. So the formation of magma from the melting of the descending plate and the continental plate forms within the continental plate itself and rises up, melts through, burns through the continental plate on its way up as it's hot and it's rising and less dense and more buoyant. And it reaches the surface and forms a chain or an arc of continental volcanic activity. And this is close to the coastline and there's a constant supply of magma from this subducting plate and the continental plate melting and there's a constant flow and volcanic activity. So two features are also formed from the subducting oceanic plate, which is going to be the ocean trench, which is going to be off the coast, and it's the point where the subducting plate starts to dive down through slab pull and form a deep part of the ocean. And then you have accretional wedge, which is part of the oceanic plate being scraped off and added onto the edge of the continental plate. And here we have the general overlook and holistic view of the convergent plate boundary, oceanic to continental.